Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have a silver Javan versus a silver chimpanzee. Who will win? Let's find out. Now the thing is in this particular game it's gonna go on like this, which is probably mostly what you're used to in low elo, but that's also why you're not gold, because the ability to have a lead, use a lead, and close the game out, that's a skill set you have to learn and it's not something magical whereby your teammates are suddenly good. It's only you, and only you that matters, nobody else. Now we did cover a Javan recently in, the, in a silver video, so we know kind of what a Javan might look to do in this elo, although this one looks to be... Do you think he's going to 3-camp? Or do you think he's going to 5-camp? Let's see. I'm, I'm curious. Okay, he's going to 5-camp, I mean. Gotta make this stuff up. Guys, stop 5-camping. Alright, get in the map here. You've got a Blitzcrank Tristana who's going to look to try and get in on this Misfortune Sona. Most likely as a Javan, you can look for a Shove Dive. As a Wukong here, we know the Javan who starts topside is going to try and come down. Why don't we do a 3 cam gank? Because you know this is going to push in, right? Because they leashed us, and they didn't leash the Javan, so they're going to have two prior. I hit the microphone, excuse me, just like Blitzcrank hit the Misfortune. She's going to stand still, be male. I mean, if you were the Wukong, and you did Red Krug's Raptors, and then looped around the top, we'd be here for a kill on the Tristan, right? We'd be here for it because she's not 3. You see 3 means she doesn't have that. And that is exactly what we will talk about in the Silver Jungling course. You can see the topics on your screen now. Fully licensed, fully created by myself, coming out tomorrow on Vukai.gg, February 17th. If you want gold and you want to climb faster than 70% of junglers, you want to showcase to your friends group that you are in fact not a low elo jungler, this course will do it for you. Everything you need is a silver jungler to succeed in League of Legends, regardless of the meta. Season 10, Season 12, Season 55. I've got you covered in this course, and I'll keep updating it as and when as necessary. Lifetime access guaranteed. And it's available right now. Click the link in the description below to investigate the course and become a gold jungler in under six months. And that's what we don't want. So if we can gank it before the three, excellent stuff. Now the monkey also is going for a five to slash six camper. The Javan in this particular case has done a inner clear, which I hate, because it delays level three. You want clears that give you level three after three camps, right? Not four camps. If you get level three after four camps, I don't like those five campers. They just don't feel good. I mean, even if you do this to go to the Grom, to go to the... The blue for sequencing, it's fine, but it's not really what we're trying to use, right? It's not our advantage. So the Javan's gonna go in on the Katarina, it looks like, but she is Shimpo, so she should be okay. Except if she walks down, which she shouldn't do, it's peculiar, it's strange. And in this case, you can say, you see, the Wukong can blame his team, and she's dead. Now, you could say that, but also it's not true, because we're going to get a gank off here on the top side against the Teemo. The Nasus is going to go in. The Teemo will also stand still. The Wukong says, can I wrap this up? Thank you very much. The full clear in low elo, as we talked about, is good, right? You can full clear, you can gank, you get a scuttle, you can reset, you can gank the other side, you can sequence again, you get a dragon, a herald. It works out nicely for you. Problem is, you miss this opportunity. If you did this, and Jarvan cut here, we'd be here for the counter gank. Javan in the meantime is in a 5 camper, gank the mid lane because his bot lane wants you. I mean, goodness gracious me! What a hook flash! Well done! Most Blitzcranks just miss it. Now she's rocket jump, and now it's difficult. Yo, numbers are juggling. Take the Raptors! Take the Raptors! Oh. Unlucky. So, <laughs> and now he's gonna take your Krugs! This is a travesty. The Wukong has missed all openings to control. No, he's just gonna go for the dive in the sun. I suppose this is what you should do. I mean, it, it, it is what you should do, yes. So, when you say you can't dive in silver, when you say your laners are never low in silver, you know, like in those high elo games on my gameplay channel, where you're like, hey, those lanes are just always so primed and juicy and gankable. They're still primed and juicy and gankable. We just decided to 5 camp instead of cutting down for a 3 camp to kill the Tristan. Unlucky. But, the most important thing is, we know the Javan does this, into this, into a 5 camp, into the mid lane gank. Why do we know this? Because if he shows up with 20 CS and we know he's still at the top side, we know he did a 5 camper. We also know that means he's going to snack this one, or has already snacked this one, which means num numbers are jungling. The second camp, after the first buff we take, will spawn around 416 to 422. Let's give it that range, right? Raptors is usually closer to 416. Grump will be more like 420, 422. Which means you see him bottom lane, you see this availability, we could at least counter jungle, right? While the Javan's killing our bottom lane, we could at least counter jungle, and that's very, very important. Because at least you would deny him something. Because you're not going to get much uh, in the other direction as well, right? Because you killed this guy, you're resetting, you're going down. You're not going to get anything. But we are able to get a kill here. Sorry, I clicked down. I'm like, drawing the map. I didn't think the Arillant would save his flash. I don't know exactly what he's doing here. Uh...
Don't do that. So the Jarvan we see here go up so we know. So basically from a Jarvan's perspective, this is also a shitty part thing because he goes inside out with no intent to dive or to counter jungle, which means he's going to walk back across ground he's already walked upon, spaghetti part thing, and thus he's not going to really have the ability to do much. The Wukong, on the other hand, goes back and does the inside out, which is a mistake. Because if you know the Jarvan did this, this, think, he went to base, he's going inside out, which means he's going to gain top lane through lane gank, or he's going to try and come down to my grump for counter jungling. I would anticipate this. We wouldn't anticipate the Jarvan coming down this way, but he does. We have a ward, so we see it. What you want to do is take the camp that takes you away from him, right? If you're afraid of the 1v1, like say you're an off-meta jungler or a weaker jungler, and you're afraid of the 1v1, you take the camp furthest away from your safety net, which is, of course, these two towers. Towers. Turrets or towers, Rakai? You stop trying to combine the woods. It doesn't work. <laughs> Goodness gracious. On both channels. I don't know why. Take this, into this, and now he wastes his time. He follows you around. You're like, haha, nothing. And then you can use that as maybe a prior for a dragon or for counter jungling for this, because he most likely looks to do something pre-6 here. Although it's 6 minutes, so he should be pretty close to 6. He's further away from 6 than I imagined, actually. But you know what it is, what it is. So now we're going to run into the job, and it's going to be a nature. It's going to be a, basically a 1v1. Who wins? Who wins this 1v1? Who sticks it out? Who rotates first? Nasus can rotate first, obviously, because he has a shorter distance to cover, so the Javan has to leave. Fortunately. But I don't really want to put that on my top laner right now. I want him to get 6 ASAP. You know, if that's a Shen, I want that 6 right now. I don't want to force him to rotate to deal with this while Teemo 6 while he's losing a wave. You know, you can kind of think about your laners in that sense. Please do. It's helpful. Very, very, very helpful. Yeah. So now, obviously, the Java knows we're there, basically does what I said the Wukong could do, and uses that for a dragon. And because this bottom lane has Pryo, right? In the meantime, Nasa says, yes, Timo, and Wukong says, yes, Timo, and then Timo says, no, Timo, although Timo says, I still kill you. Pff, close. Chug your potions, if you have potions. Uh, I'm not really a fan. I mean, you, the team is fine, but you don't really need it anymore. I mean, Ravis is not... Ravenous is not the way to go. Walking across a ward here, we know they're taking this, but we're super low HP. Where are we going? Oh, dear. Oh, my son. Oh, no, my dear son. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay. Silvers, my friends, in the course, we talk about this. The basics of silver tracking. How to deal with randomness. What, what, <laughs> what am I witnessing? How do we deal with randomness, right? This is just an abysmal... Please get executed. No, he's going to be fine because he's going to have the... He doesn't even have smite. Oh my goodness gracious. It <laughs> Jungling in silver be like... Oh my goodness gracious. That was amazing. Oh, and the Javan EQs over the wall to see the Raptor camp. Sees the Wukong here out of position. And he's just going to cheeky base. Oh my goodness gracious me. If there was a more silver game in this universe, my friends, it would not exist. This is it. This is the epitome of silver. What a shroom. Okay. If this is you, you make these mistakes, listen up. Firstly, I'm obviously going to tell you my silver course covers all of this and how to not do this and how to abuse this Jarvan, but Jarvan does a five camp as shows here. What we did is we five camped, full cleared, excuse me, gang top lane took a scuttle. Bad play. If we just leverage that into bottom lane gank here before she had rocket jump, we get ahead of the Javan because silver junglers are going to look to full clear 5 camp more often than they're going to cut it short, which means we could just use that to get ahead of him. Now he sits in the river and goes, I don't know what to do. So you can cut him off, gank the mid lane, take this scuttle, you have the whole blue side to fall back to, and you can still gain top lane. However, none of that happens, and so we're sitting here, we should track this raptor camp because we know he did red raptors, you following? We know he did red raptors because he chose with mid lane 20 CS, hmm? and bottom lane 24 including the scuttle also this is funny that's quite funny i should do this but always assume that when you die topside at eight minutes and you're off the map that the dude's gonna be doing the herald it's the first thing you should think about hitting the plant having a probe having a check if you're still strong enough you can fight them and take them out unfortunately he didn't think about that so the job gets a freebie all right now he shows 20 24 we know he's going back to base he shows up here right so you press tab as he takes his 28 then he goes to here and comes back here and you press tab and you see 32. So I know we did Raptor's Krugs. I know they're not on the map. So when you're in silver, please, when you see them, press tab and track the CS. What could he have done based upon where he came from? And that's it. So we cover all of this in the course, like in-depth, fundamentals of jungle tracking in silver to deal with randomness, to deal with the weird clears you're going to face. But you, at the very least, what I just said is a baseline for all silver tracking. All right? And you can easily do it. There's no reason... 
to say, hey, he took this dragon, let me go Krugs. I know you Krugs are down. I don't need to go and take this on one HP. This is 90%. Just go back to base, reset, and try and do something on the bottom side. Use your ult on a lane that's going to snowball. Don't use your ult on the red buff and then die. All right? That's just a case of proactive thinking. <laughs> or just thinking in general. You're on activation. There's no reason to go for this place. But definitely, I think the biggest thing I can give advice-wise to anyone in this elo is most players are going to 5 to 6 camp, try and 3 camp and abuse a laner matchup, and if you don't know what the champions do, you will learn. So here we go. Now we have ultimate. Now we have to use it, but it is a, obviously a blitzcrank. We get the knockup. We're hoping he has no flash. The Katarina will show up. She doesn't get anything, unfortunately, but that's fine. Nice, right? Now imagine if we did that 4 minutes sooner, or 3 minutes sooner. Juicy, right? So... Yeah, really, really try and use this. You know he starts here, he's coming down. Get ahead of him. Tempo advantage, we discussed that as well in the course. I'm obviously going to reference that because I've basically spent so many, so many hours working on that curriculum to say, like, if you're in silver and you have all of this information, you're going to get through. Obviously, I want to give you as much information in these free videos as well, so don't worry about that. Jungle PDF, you can teach yourself. But the whole point is, these fundamentals will carry you probably to Diamond. You know, like, the foundation of the house has to be strong. And if you were to, say, go to a gold game, you'd see the same behaviors, but the jungler, the Wukong, would behave differently in response to it. Now, obviously, we have here a Sona being trapped. The Java just goes in so far ahead of his team. Now, that's the Java making the mistake. You know, this is a very typical silver thing in these skirmishes and ganks. He says, hey, let me just go in straight away. He doesn't think, hey, where's the Wukong? What's the mid lane situation for the roams? Where's my bottom lane? Can they follow up? And most of the times the bottom lanes can just not follow up at all, right? Like he goes in here, he's trapped for 10 years. And he's trapped the Sona in a crater for 10 years and she just says, yeah, no, dance away, son. And then the other two show up eventually, but it's too late, he's been chunked. The Misfortune's ulting, the Wukong's showing up. And now the Wukong says, hey, kill conversion ratio, which means to take your kills and convert them into advantages or objectives. Unfortunately, there is no objective, except there is right now. So we take the Grump, right? We wait for that, and now we can cheese. I like this. Here we go, a little bit of cheese here. However, what's our bottom lane situation? 1100, no cash monies, uh, no manners, half HP, no ultimates. In this situation, if the dragon spawns, see, now he's going solo, as a Tristana is going to show up, he's fortunate there, he dodges that. You don't want to force your bottom lane to overstay. You don't want to do that. If this dragon is up, as you kill the Javan, you can go for it. Now, a lot of the time as well, if the Javan is expected to go topside, you can still do the Grump on the Dragon, but in this particular case, I think it's a good idea to let your bottom lane hit plates while it's 12 and a half minutes and you're not going to get the Herald, just to guarantee, as we smack ourselves some kills, we will die for it. <gasps> what a genius. Mechanical God! Nice, right? We'll take it. But the Blitzcrank's coming and Tristan is coming. Go, 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 run, run, run. <laughs> the Teemo's also MIA. Uh-oh. I mean, I'm sure we're going to die at some point, but whatever it is. You know, let your teammates get some plates here because obviously, I mean, at this point, you could have just gotten executed. Like, at this point, you wait, you just get executed. That's better. Okay, so execute yourself in those situations. But I think get plates because they've not had a good game. And you've not had a good game. So you kind of just want to get some gold and pocket for yourself and for them. Um, you can always go back into this side and then do it afterwards once Javin shows somewhere else. Or you can reset yourself, get some gold, and go straight back to the dragon. Definitely an option for us. Javin, in the meantime... Uh, well, I, I'm not trying to track him at this point. We're just going to watch things. So basically, you don't know from your perspective where he's going to go. Now, top side, bottom side, you have no idea. We see the Aurelian Soul floating in the river. We see the Javan here. He goes and dunks the Katarina. She will Shrimpo out. He's going to Q. You can reactivate that to get your teammates out of it and yourself. Four, three, two, one. Do we have uh, plants? Yes, we get to it. Chuck a dagger for repositioning. Warded! No, we're walking to the team. Wukong's arriving. Wukong's arriving. EQ misses. Yes, Wukong, do the things. No ultimate though, but we can definitely kill the Javan. Focus the Javan. Kill the Javan. Very good. Railing Soul's most likely going to kill the Katarina, so don't even worry about her. But don't overchase either the Teemo, because he's super fast. He can blind you in this. Oh, uh, no, don't. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. We <laughs> you can see me. I'm getting nervous. I'm very, very afraid of the Railing Soul flank and also just getting a little bit too stuck. Um, there you go. Don't, don't overchase. I say that as someone who obviously plays champions that can very easily overchase, and, you know, I still may or may not do that myself. Everyone does that. Everyone does this. You're like, yes, and then you don't get there, and you're like, oh, or they live one HP. But ideally, in your VOD reviews, you know, you're looking at this, you're going, okay, look, I was trying, but maybe I should have just been a bit more aware of my surroundings. 
and he used uh, Razor Ghoulette with Bruce Wayne, and off you go, you know? So this overall has turned out to be a very reminiscent Silver game. Uh, we're up a little bit of CS, Javan lost all leads, right? He stopped doing stuff that was remotely proactive. For some reason, we've got to the top side with this up. This is a juicy thing I want. Now, okay. I, I suppose we weren't really gonna get there in time, but it's something we did wolves into the blue like we could have. Is this something I would try and steal? Oof. No misfortune. I'm trying to think objectively. Objectively, my, my brain is telling me, guys, just take something else. Go for the Herald. Take the Scuttle on the top side. I think, without a doubt, this whole stuff here as a coach, I'm saying, this is better. Ideally, we're not dead, though. Ideally, we're looking at this next Dragon Spawn as something we're going to take before the second Herald. So this kill here into the Gromp, into someone, I kind of wanted this. And fortunately, we waste time dying here. Then we waste time dying here. And that costs us the ability to get everything. So the overchases and the deaths and the overcommits and the three, you know, this death for me is the stupidest one. This one's also dumb. This one you can kind of go, well, I took the jungler off the map. I still cleaned up. I, I got myself back in the game. But then we should go to the bottom side afterwards, right? I know we rotated to this fight and again, S plus decision making. But then if you can just survive, take a Herald if it's up, take it full back, and then you can probably still get to this in time. You know, you follow what I'm saying? The deaths really compromise your decision matrix. They really do. You just cannot afford to die three times. I mean, it's not a lot of times that he's died, but you cannot afford to die three times in a silly fashion. In a fashion that gives them free objectives. You know, and that's the problem. We wasted our first ult, we died in their jungle, and yes, they wasted time chasing us, but it's not like we got anything for it. Well, we went counter jungling for Krugs that don't exist. We went taking a red buff that way to use our ult for. The Javits still killed us and got the red back, or the Teemo got the red double buffs. Justana's not moving into the top side here for some particular um, confusing reason. She just sees this and is like, I guess I should rotate, which does happen. I do understand the reactive pathing of Silvers to just blindly fight for no reason. Where are we going, buddy? You get lifesteal from your E. You should uh, do your Q. You should probably just stand and fight, but he, he chooses not to. Yeah. This is all connected. The first death leads to the second death, which leads to the third death, which leads to, I have to give this up and go here, which leads to the fourth death. It's, a, it's, a, it's again, it's death compounding, right? Not death stranding, death compounding. Mm -hmm. And mm, I, the, decision make, uh, the decision making on the tracking for me is just such a horrific crime because you can't tell me you can't do it. I understand you say I'm focusing on my champion, right? I'm focusing on my champion and I don't, really notice these little things fine that's why we play simple champions learn a simple champion so that you can focus on the tracking because the tracking is the most important thing and good micro players good micro players who have great mechanics on their champion can easily climb to gold just by being in these situations they're doing stupid things you know but their champion and the mechanics are good whereas if you're a bit rusty you make a few mistakes mechanically yeah i like that little flash bonk yeah we'll take that one we have no ultimate here he's gonna flash dunk good job by the katarina never flash dunk a katarina Thank you for the Rome, Sona. We'll take that. Again, uh, this is what I like, right? So let's give some compliments here. I like the full sequence into the gank. I thought that was fine. We know the Javan's going to do equal and opposite. I don't think that should have been a priority strategy, but we executed a strategy and a game plan nonetheless. We could have used that for counter jungling and denial, which means instead of the Javan coming out of base and taking these camps, there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. And he's going to go here, and again, there's absolutely nothing. You're in the meantime going back to base, going to the bottom side while he's trailing. You get the kill, now you get the first dragon. So the game plan that he chose is fine, but he didn't take the second phase of that game plan. However, he's had very good reactive prior things. Low HP people top side, low HP people mid lane. He's, he's moved to the fights. I was going to say walked and moved is one word. But he's moved to the fights. Got in cleanup kills. He's 7-4-3. That's great. But it's one of these games where you cannot afford to be four deaths. And everything that's happening in this game right now, 5.3k gold misfortune, 7.8k gold Tristana. A Fetristana is an absolute nightmare to deal with. I don't know why we're walking in the river against three people, four people, 4v1. I don't know what we're doing here exactly. This would be a decision of, hey guys, look at my engage. My team followed up. No, that's a results based. I don't want a results basis. It's a solo queue game. There's no coordination. But if you could wait a little bit for your team to follow and then you can engage, good. He's a little bit lucky here, but at the same time, if I'm in solo queue and this happens, you go, thank you team, thanks for following up. Or you just go into Discord, Ooh, my team followed me up, how nice, right? Just uh, be aware that in some silver games, that team move is not gonna happen. And so you just die. So just, uh, you know, same thing with the job and he engages, 
And he's like, come on, guys. They take too long to rotate and he dies. So it's the same scenario, right? You don't know results based on decision. Always, if I go, oh, something in my eye. Help. Eye surgery completed. <laughs> you know, you, you always want to say, if I engage here, is my team able to follow? Are my team able to follow up? If I engage here, will I just die? So this Herald's a little late, obviously. Um, I talk a lot about kind of shoving and cutting. I don't think I would necessarily have ever stayed here, but it is what it is. We're talking about other things at this point. Macro-wise, I do cover this a lot as well in, in Silver Games. What you want to focus on here is shove and cut, more so than split push. Because if you don't pay attention to death timers, the whole team's just going to collapse on you. If you split to a tower at tier 2 and you don't have the same pressure on the map parallel to you, you're going to end up just being collapsed on. So in this case, we want to shove and cut, and then we can maybe do something else. We also have that Herald for a little bit longer. Alternatively, you shove, Herald, cut, and now they will deal with the Herald because they will want to deal with the Herald. And now you can shove into here and maybe take this one and make a pick. So ideally for Silver, you're looking to the team fight with your team fighting champion. A lot of shoving and cutting. You don't want to split push too hard because your team are not going to understand to match parallel to you. You have to recognize this as a split pusher. That's probably not the best play. Now, in the meantime, because we died once more, we are now giving up yet another dragon position. However, our team is now primed to actually fist and fight, and Nasus is like, I am online, the Doge Kane is, uh, is rising, or, or something weird like this. Imagine cool phrases in your mind, and play some thematic um, trailer music, you know, nice, nice, nice Mission Impossible music. And then that's what the Nasus is doing topside in ISO, and we're going to show up here with our team, we're deciding, hey, let's collapse and maybe contest for this. That was the most abysmal E on the rel- oh, dear, dear me. Um, pretend you didn't see that, I apologize for showing you this. Uh, uh, publicly. Um, well then, Sona for some reason is on the top side trying to flank an Aurelian Soul. And instead of, like, why aren't we doing it? Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. We push them out of position. Go, 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 go. Do the dragon here. They will be forced to rotate then turn, okay? There's no reason for us to kind of, like, what are we doing? Let's go. They're not in position. Like, what are they actually doing? Like, Tristana was dead or in base and Timo was dead and the Aurelian Soul was out of position. You could have just done it. So we wasted 30 seconds trying to trap when we could have finished it. So now you're coin flipping it. Whereas you, that ultimate. Oh dear me! See, now we're having to decide, do we finish the dragon? I can tell you what the answer is. No. You turn and you fight. When you have three people in a Misfortune Ultimate with a Katarina and everyone's sitting together in an AoE zone, you just turn and fight and just ace them, take the dragon, take the Baron, and end the game. That's it. We decided to burn the dragon by ourselves and say, team, don't die. But no, you can't do that. Look at the corpses. You need to ensure you turn on that fight. That was beautiful. Set that was a beautiful setup. But why are we, why are we chilling in this bush for 30 seconds instead of just doing this? Because we shoved them off, right? Tristan is gone, chunked, uh, Timo's dead, uh, Rolling Soul's out of position. Who cares about the Sona dying? Take your dragon. They show up. Together you fight. And then you take the Baron. Because we don't, we take the dragon, our teammates die, and they get the Baron. And I'm very happy to say that the red team, I'm happy with that decision, kills straight into the early Baron, something I'm really trying to push. If you're in silver, you can take that so easily uh, with most champions, so yeah. Very, 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 very interesting early game strategies on tracking, on pathing, on accuracy, on engage. You know, how it can very much feel like from a Wukong's perspective at 865 that he hasn't played so badly. Like, if you don't know better, you're probably like, well, I was making good plays. I got some picks. My teammates followed me up. I got a dragon there. You know, I wasn't playing so badly. For some reason, the Jarvan's Krogs were down. No, there was good reason for the Jarvan Krogs being down. And we should have taken them. They should have been down to us, right? So, it's good to VOD review silver games like this because it's very easy to feel like you're doing everything you can and your bottom lane is at fault. But as I showed you at level 3, we could have dominated that bottom lane and won it already. And then Jarvan's like, whoa, I don't know what to do. And you saw the Jarvan was 0, 4, 6 at one point, despite that early start. He was out of the game, you know, because we rotated to the place he was making and cleaned things up, which was great. But because he's now a team fighter in the team fighting zone, as we saw in the last silver coaching, um, he can dominate, right? He can absolutely dominate. And that's the problem. See, now from Jarvan, I probably would try and sneak this. I would probably sneak this away and then EQ out. So I like to kind of drift, watch the chase and take and leave. But um, more risk, but you have to be aware of your champion's strat, right? And you don't die for it. You just try and sneak it and run. You definitely don't stay over and die. Or this. Yeah, all that. <laughs> or you trap. <laughs> that is a you can you can do that as well. Good job, Jarvan's team. Grouping together, playing as one unit. Very nice. But he's dying too much. He's out of position and dying too much. 
Uh, here, if, you, if you're in the negative game state, typical uh, frameworks for you as the Wukong to avoid this. Uh, don't face check dark zones, control wood scanners. Don't walk to a place where they know you are, yeah? Don't show I'm going to red, and then go to red. Scan, fake out, use residual vision to go the opposite direction, lose the long umbrella power thing. Just don't walk into where you know they are. Don't let them see where you're going and telegraph it and have as much vision control as possible. And usually, what will happen is if you don't get picked off, if you don't get picked off, um, they will eventually tilt into you, right? Uh, Wukong's gonna show up here now. Again, again, he's just dead too much. He's seven, he's got the most deaths on his team, most deaths on his team, excuse me. I mean, we do hit this one. Tristana's weak on the back line here. There's a shutdown now. Misfortune. Auto! 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 Ah, we die. Mr. Tristana's so giga giga fed. That's what we want to avoid. Win condition. Look at the game from the loading screen. Yeah. Nasus will be fine. Katarina's a good snowball mechanic. Probably want to gank bot lane first. And then I want to use that to gank mid lane so I can get those two lanes fed. And then me and Katarina can roam bottom lane 18 times. And then every now and then we can go top lane, just for a cleanup kill or so. That's what would go through my mind. Not, hey, I should gank the team over the Nasus first, you know? But it's blindly starting bot side and just going up. That's the problem in Silver. So you got to think about dynamic game planning. Tracking, you know, meshing your clear with their clear. Consolidating what they're going to do with what you want to do. Recognizing that what you expected them to do is not what they're actually doing. And how do you counter that with good play? And all of that comes together in, in, in a really solid game plan, you know what I mean? And as long as you ask yourself these questions in VOD review and as you go into the loading screen, you typically can find yourself climbing in low elo uh, pretty easily. So Dragon is spawning, obviously, in this particular case, we would like to go get that, so I think we should cut in. Thank you very much. We obviously have a dead Javan, dead teamer, which means go, 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 go. You have numbers advantage. Let's try and get on the back line here to kill the Tristana. If they're smart, they'd probably just disengage and spend and don't die unnecessarily, which again would be huge, right? Most of your ADCs would just stay out and die, so excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Good job. Bounty as well. Bottom lane is here by itself. We could push this. You know, the Baron's not up. There's no objective up. Nasus is taking it, unfortunately. Someone has to take it. Here, look at all this stuff. Like, we've got a... We see it's warded. We see it's warded. Oh, that's our woods. Goodness gracious me. Never mind. But the point being... Your scanner, he's at 22 and 27. If your vision score is below one a minute, you're probably not scanning enough. Because most low elo players, as you see here, will keep warding totems blue trinkets and every now and then there'll be a control ward so there's gonna be more wards right than scanners the more warding totems and scanners in this elo so you're actually gonna get some benefit if they remember to press the button so i would i would in this type of game scan and make sure this is clean so you know if you're seen or not it's very important when you're behind unfortunately in this case it doesn't prove my point but <laughs> as a general practice tip yeah as a general practice tip because that's what i'm trying to give you i'm trying to give you tips that you know you would use every game regardless of what the reality is, because we don't know what the reality is. Like, this is third person, post-event, oh, there's no wards, why would I scan? Well, you don't know that in-game. You know, they just detach from pushing, so obviously I would expect it to be some wards, like right there, right? So now we could scan and kill it. Scan and kill it, but don't die. You've got clone, there we go, see? Good. So that's what we're trying to do with that vision, now we've denied it a little bit. Baron is spawning though, which is a bit of the issue, and um, Inhib is yeeted away from us. While we do that, and now basically it's just a bit of a... It's a type of situation you don't want to be in if you're in silver. <laughs> this Blitzcrank is tilting. Well, I, I, I credit to him. Good job, Blitzcrank. Nice flash hook, especially on the Javan gank. They want 2v2, and then he flash hooked for the next gank. That dooms the lane already, like it's done. So that's why I'm telling you Wukong should be doing things to, to take over games, you know? Careful for the hook. Oh, he's there, but yeah. Zyra, my Zyra brain's going off. When I'm support, because this is Blitzcrank, it's a horrible lane. But I always go for these things, and I'm always worried about the, the Javan or the Blitzcrank, and I'm like, please no. My, it's just my cautious brain going off. I mean, Katarina's just out of, like, you see? That's what I was afraid of happening to me. I put myself in the monkey's position, but nothing you do about that. That's why you see this game, and you're like, it's 30 minutes. You know, I want soul. I want to be level 18, level 17. I don't care that this happens. I just win the 4v5 fight. But for me, the biggest reason why we lost this game... One, early game planning was just not so good. Two, despite all of that, we still made some good reaction plays to the map. We paid attention to the map. We missed a few openings, but we saw some good plays and we cleaned up. Yes, we overcommitted and overchased and of course died for those things. But this right here, this dragon, 
where we waited for 30 seconds instead of taking the time to take the dragon and then turning instead of like we stayed on the dragon instead of turning that's why we lost the game because from that they converted um a hextech dragon into uh sorry no we got that one they they, they converted that into a baron right they, they could have easily gotten both the fight the ace the mountain dragon and the baron we're lucky we got the dragon because we just decided eventually okay look it's doomed we better take it but it was doomed because we were taking it paradox well, not really but you know what i mean I hope. <laughs> In the meantime, now, we're just trying to fight. Like, you can just dominate fights here because you're Wukong, and your team is still pretty strong. Like, you have Katarina resets, you have a NASA scaling, you have a lot of disruption, but you're leveled down to a 2818 Javan. And now people are going to say, well, yeah, it's because of the meta. Yeah, not really. Like, we don't deserve to be ahead of them. If anyone thinks you deserve to be ahead of the, 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 the Javan here, then, um, you know, it's a little bit delusional. I think you've both played equally as well and unwell as each other at different moments. Uh, although the Wukong's done a better job reacting, but the Javan's just done what he's needed to do, right? He's just, I'm going to engage and CC, and uh, there you go. He's coin flipping. But if you want to climb to gold, you need almost the rest of your team to also be sort of that 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 solid canvas. It's a bit weird. If everyone was going to get to gold in a, in a silver game, obviously that's the best dream. But most people won't, right? Most will not get to gold. Most will stay down here, so all you need them to do is enable you to carry in this game. And then in the next game, you need those people to enable you to carry again. And so Javan is doing his duty to help his team. And he, if he does this enough, he might get gold. It'll take a hell of a lot longer, though, and then if you just take control of the game. So hopefully you can follow my drift, which is why I say, like, the Amumu, Demonics, Conqueror, Drain Tank, AoE Fighter is the best. Because you can gank early, sequence, and dominate in late-game teamfights. And you make a lot of picks. The outplay potential is pretty good. It's really weird how he became such an unskilled champion over time, and then they reworked him to like this high elo support where I'm actually suggesting him as like a carry jungle for low elo, but not because I was just boring engaged in the past, but because the rework has made him, this mini rework made him much more interesting to play. You know, the double Q toss with the extra range was just something so cool. Why are we sitting here when we know they're rotating? Also, why are you dunking a guy with a clone? Uh-oh. 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 Yep, there you go. Oh, I mean, uh-oh for the enemy team! Yeah. Uh-oh for a little bit. Well then. Silver stuff. <laughs> now the Javan overchases and the rest of the team rotates and you just hit this Sona ult, Katarina ult, Javan, uh, sorry, um, uh, Wukong ult. Like, our team fighting is godly from an ultimate perspective, right? Four of them are just grouped up like this. Like, they just chase the Wukong and you think, uh-oh, I'm gonna die. And then we just go in Giga with the whole team and we win the fight. And you're going, imagine if we had the lead, you know? Yeah. All right. Nice. That's. A, I mean, that's all you can do in this particular case. Fate, have a good fight. Use your AoE, which again, remember. Now they're over... See, this is... Oh, this kind of stuff is really, really important, right? They're making picks now. Because you have three people dead, the other two don't know what to do. So they just push blindly. And from that, you get an advantage, right? From that, you're able to just kill them again. And now the three are up but the two are dead, or the one is dead. And then the three push, and then you kill the three again, 5v3. And then the two push, like, they, they're never five again, because they don't stop to wait, to be patient, to group up again. They just do random things. Like, like the misfortune splits past vision line, right? Vision line, this is, not a, this is not a vision line, right? Fog of war, everywhere, darkness, Mordor. You know, like, here's the vision line. So that was just a protection for in incoming traffic. You see, this is your vision line, like, no. Back up, back up. Javan's like, yes, thank you. I will take you down for that. And then the Wukong says, hey, I will take you down for that as well. But the team, his team's coming. His team's coming. Okay, doesn't matter. We get the kill. Oh, the Sona R. The scaling of the Sona is coming online. Yes, we can do the, the Lex Luthor things. Oof, very nice. Here we go. Imagine if you just had the damn lead at 28 minutes. You'd be over. You'd be in the next, you'd be in the next game already. And when you are typically a casual, like, I don't mean that offensively, I just mean you don't play that many games. Say you play like two, three hundred a year. Don't you want to maximize every game? Like, if you could play five games in the time you're playing three, just because you learn how to close better, because you're better game planning, because you're a better jungler, you will climb to gold faster. Instead of like three years, it'll take you a few months. You know, it's, it's always good to think like that. So again, we chase the Java and the team are definitely rotating. But at this point, he says, I don't care because I know I'm 18. I know I can dominate this, which is good. Like he's turned it online now. Now he's carrying. Now imagine if his 18 was when everyone else was 15. He'd be solo carrying this game. 
Look at the death time. Is Jarvan's respawning? Tristana's respawning? Blitzcrank is respawning. Can we get this and get out? That's the timer we're going for here. We're kind of just going to go for it. I don't think I would have used my clone, but I get why. Uh, we just want to have that escape tool. We want to have the escape tool. We don't want to die. Oh, goodness gracious, Tristana's coming. Yeah. Yeah, I would have just... I would have tried to do it without using my clone. I, I don't think you can afford to use your clone because now you're dead. The Baron's up. She's pushing this. Oh, that's not good. No, don't do it! <laughs> she pushed She pushed too far again. Oh, no way. Oh, they're just like this guy to the Baron, yeah. Okay, good, good, good call. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He's giving up, like, that's his fault. So he's kind of come online now. He's kind of started to realize how he can dominate these fights. And then instead of, you know, just leaving with the inhib and maybe going down here or just resetting for the Baron play, yeah, he doesn't. Because what you actually want to do... Wait. You have no Wukong, guys. You have no Wukong. Katarina's going in. She's going to try to do things. That a really insult ultimate is huge. Justana's untouched on the back line. The blind on the misfortune. And she burns from the shrooms. And then Nasus says, I am Doge. Fear the cane. And then Timo says, I'm going to blind you too. And then Justana says, get out. And then Wukong says, team, why'd you go in? Team. But it's your fault. Your team's in that position because you die taking in Hib instead of saving your escape tool to escape. And from this, you lose. So, Wukong. Well played, buddy. Nice mid to late game stuff. Really, really good. Sort of using the chase down and recognizing when your champion came online. I was honestly a little concerned with some of the chases, but you ended up knowing your champion and using your lead, which is great, right? Um, you had an AoE teamfight comp. They started over chasing you. You responded with great teamfights. You guys took them out. I love the GA. The build is good and solid. And, um, you know, the team match was a little bit of an, an odd cookie. You didn't really need that initially. Could have just... I know you bought it and sold it, but you didn't really need it at all. But you lost because of this, and you lost because of this. So if you were to pin the whole game onto one person, which is cruel, you never want to do that. But I think if you want to improve, it's important to say, like, if my team did exactly the same thing every game, what would I have done differently to carry? Dragon fight and inhib were the two major things. Early game jungling is obviously the biggest thing, but you can learn that. But those two moments are what lost the game. Well played, though. Nice try. Good job, Jarvan. Just existing, I suppose. And um, thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget, Silver Course is available for you. Go ahead and click the link below and have a look out and see if you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.